So hello students, welcome to my orientation to pediatrics. First when I was asked to do this orientation, I really was wondering what exactly should I tell you all. That's when I thought why not begin right at the start as to what is pediatrics. Pediatrics is that medical field which focuses on the health and disease in children. And remember in this what is maximum focused upon is the health in children. Pediatric pathology is still a very small part. It is the beauty of pediatric physiology which I will be focusing upon. The art of medicine which is pediatrics, what I would say, what are all synonymous words for pediatrics? The synonymous words in pediatrics I would put as soft, gentle, nurturing. This is our subject, the subject which deals with the beauty of handling children. The science of pediatrics greatly involves the science of observation and deduction. Remember, all of you must have had some experience in taking case in children or at least seen children in your household. It is very difficult to examine children and get that kind of cooperation which we will normally get in an adult. An adult you tell them to lie down, the adult will lie down, they will expose their abdomen, you can palpate, you can actually tell them to take a deep breath, they actually do it. But imagine a small infant who is crying and hungry. In that infant, it's very difficult to tell the infant to stop crying and the infant to understand and actually do it. So that is why the science of pediatrics greatly involves the science of observation and deduction. And that is what is the key to understanding pediatrics and the key to actually identifying problems in pediatrics. Careful observation is all that you need to know pediatrics. This is one science where all of you are exposed to. All of you have been children, all of you have been adolescents and all of you will be seeing children in your households. So with all this, always there will be a contact with pediatrics. All of pediatric pathology you will not be exposed to. Neither will you be exposed to any kind of pathology in every other subject. But like what I said at the start, pediatrics is about 70% of pediatric health and pediatric physiology. So nearly by just observing the children around you, you will learn 70% of pediatrics. Just by seeing what is happening in your household, how the children in the household are, how the children in the colony are, how you have been as a child and deducting between all those things, you will be able to identify a lot of pediatric pathology just as deviations from what you were as a child. History taking in pediatrics, that is why I say has immense importance and analysis of this history is very important. Because essentially, the person who has observed the child best is the mother. So by carefully building up that rapport with the mother, by not intimidating her, by trying to find the pathology in her child, by trying to find out that whatever she has to say, listening to her carefully, that is the best way you will get a clue in your pediatric pathology and that history is equal to its weight in gold because the mother has been with the child throughout. An adult on the other hand experiences the symptoms and can directly tell you what all problems he or she is facing. In a child, the child will not be able to tell you either because of the young age or essentially because the child does not wish to be proven sick. So they do not wish to tell you exactly what is wrong. They would rather say that no nothing is wrong with me, I am fine. That is why the history given by the mother is very, very important. And by carefully deducting that history is when you will actually find out what is wrong with the child. So I decided to divide my orientation in pediatrics and in learning the subject as a science into three main sections. In the first section, I thought I'll deal with it as how would you learn pediatrics for MBBS as a final year subject? Second, how would you prepare for it when you go for your qualifying exams in NEET and third for those who have fallen in love with the subject like me and want to take it up as a speciality. So let's begin with the art of studying pediatrics in final MBBS. Pediatrics has to be given time along with all other subjects. If you look at the marks allotted for pediatrics in these years, what I'm saying is post the 2019 CBME batch which will come to final year in 2022. Now leaving that batch the rest of the batches before 2018 and before who are currently in final MBBS, pediatrics is a smaller subject when compared to the heavyweight subjects of final year where it's medicine, surgery and OBG. But nevertheless, because pediatrics has a totally different outlook, hence it has to be given time. It is not like any other subject where it is just a different system approach in an adult. This is an entire physiology apart, hence it needs to be given time while studying in final MBBS. Now what are the study plan options that I thought of? Now remember when you plan out your options for studying in final MBBS, the ultimate best plan is the plan that has worked for you all this while. 
We all can give options and it's up to you to decide which suits you best. But like how you buy a shoe, it's when you wear it and you say it's comfortable, that's the best shoe for you. That's how when you're planning out your timetable in final MBBS for studying, it is how what type of learner you are and what kind of focus you need towards which subject is what will give you your ideal timetable. But there are a few options which I'd like to put forth. My option A is studying regular pediatrics as a schedule with time given once or twice a week wherein say Tuesdays or Saturdays you sit and study pediatrics that whole section after you come back from your clinics and your theory schedules. Come back and study pediatrics section by section and in this manner finish up pediatrics throughout the year. This session, this kind of studying will start right from the beginning when pediatrics theory classes start. And till now in the schedule pediatrics theory starts in the 7th semester. So right from 7th semester, you will be putting in regular hours to study pediatrics. And whenever you're posted in the clinical posting in pediatrics, which is usually around one month in final MBBS 8th semester and final MBBS 9th semester, you will have one one month postings. In that time, you will pick up your clinical pediatric skills. And it's important to understand how to weave these two together. The theory part of pediatrics that you study regularly as well as the bedside pediatrics and the clinical pediatrics, which is totally based upon what you see in the clinical postings and the cases and how you learn from them. Another option I wanted to offer is pediatrics, which is read as a part of the clinical posting primarily, where in that clinical posting, where whole month you'll be in pediatrics alone, you finish up studying pediatrics in that full month, where you'll study case-based learning and learn around the case. When I say learn around the case, what do I mean? I mean that suppose you see a case of thalassemia in your clinical posting today. You come back home, you read about thalassemia. Now having read about thalassemia, you have correlated with what you have learnt in the clinical posting. Alongside thalassemia, don't just stick and stop at thalassemia reading. Go on and diverge and start reading about how to read an approach to anemia. So then from approach to anemia, approach to hemolytic anemia, approach to iron deficiency anemia, megaloblastic anemia and that's about it. There's nothing more to study in anemia as far as pediatrics is concerned in that important session of with that you will understand how it is to study about thalassemia, iron deficiency anemia and megaloblastic anemia. This will be the main section under anemia. So just by that one initial trigger case of thalassemia, you will be able to cover the entire chapter of anemia. So this is another type of studying you can do, wherein in that clinical posting, take your clinical case as just the lead case or what we call the lid opener. You open the lid with that case and then go further and diverge and start reading the entire chapter, trying to compare all along. Okay, thalassemia, that is what I read. Now how different is iron deficiency anemia? How different is megaloblastic anemia with that case? And why is it different? Once you remember and start studying in this fashion, with that one month, you would have finished almost the entire important sections of pediatrics. The rest of the year, you will be doing catch-up pediatrics in the middle, maybe on a weekend, wherein you will study important topics. That is another study plan option which you can have. I always believe that case-based learning leads to long-term learning. So whenever you do see cases in the world, come back and read about them. That kind of sinks them into your head. And what you have seen is connected with what you read. That is long-term learning. Now, how do you prepare for your final MBS exams? Now, we have two big sections. You have your theory exam and you have your practical exam. So, how do you read for that? Now, in the theory exam, the three most important things which you choose to learn from are reading from textbooks, reading from your class notes, as well as revision of question papers. Now, this is the main section of theory and this should occur in this order. Always read theory from a very good book first. Then move on to reading from your class notes and usually you can't keep on reading multiple things a day before the exam. Try and have one composite book in which all the important information is there. Like if your class notes have a lot of important interesting information which your faculty has given you, then use this and convert it into your textbook wherein your textbook will now have its own information plus a small post-it notes a separately made notes clipped into your textbook, you will have a finally a composite book wherein all the info, important information from the class, from the textbook and from any other interesting source like what you've had while discussing with your friends, etc. Everything together gets compiled into one book. That book will be your Bible for reading for the exams. 
Now, revision of question papers is very useful, especially in universities, wherein they follow a set pattern for giving the exam. So, you will have set topics which are coming as major questions. So, these major questions will come only from certain chapters. So, you can focus your attention on those chapters and then read from revision of previous year's question papers. But always while doing this, please be prepared that you may be at the brink of a change. You may have question papers all along in one format and from this batch onwards, things may be planned to be different, the questions may be a little different. Everything now is being focused clinical based. That is what we as medical teachers have been told to do. We have been told to focus everything through problem based learning or case vignette based learning or concept based learning. That is what we have been told to do in our classes so as to improve the clinical correlation that students have and pediatrics just doesn't become a huge mugging subject where you keep on reading book after book and just reproducing it in the exam. So as much as possible try and read with clinical cases, try and understand with clinical cases so that there is long term learning. Now coming to the practical exams, in the practicals what all is assessed? Practicals, important learning is with the case based learning by the bedside. Many, every university has their own set of cases. Most universities have a long case and the short case which is a neonatology case. Now this neonatology case and long case will be given its separate marks. Some universities have two short cases. Based upon how your university does your practical exam, you will have to focus based on that kind of learning but essentially most of the cases given for the long case or for the short case are constant all over. So you will have to see your case matrix. We will be having a case matrix and in that case matrix will be the important cases that you have to see. Focus on learning those cases in extreme depth because this is where you will be quest questioned on a viva voce examination in the practical viva. The other four things which are important in a practical exam are the instruments, the x-rays, the vaccines, the diet and nutrition tray and other common drugs. So this is the other small viva voce component which is comes as a immediate quick recall viva. Now these are all highly scoring areas where your x-rays, instrument, diet, nutrition, vaccines as well as the drug trays. Anything you answer right here will get you full marks. So try as much as possible to put these into your head in such a way that it comes out quick. You are able to recall these things quick. Learn important special aspects about each of these things so that when questioned you will be able to answer appropriately. That is what will give you marks because these are highly scoring. In the event of you getting a tough case for the pediatric practical exam, having a good knowledge of instruments, x-rays, vaccines and drugs will help you remunerate your marks which you could have maybe lost during your case based discussions. Coming to this, what is most important? What do we look at as examiners in pediatrics? Because we also know all cases are not the same. A student who gets an adolescent thalassemic for exam definitely has an easier case to take than a student who gets a small one year old with failure to thrive who is cranky and is crying. So that is why what do we primarily focus upon? we focus upon what I have named as the pillars in pediatrics. So we have three pillars and these three pillars are growth and development, nutrition and anthropometry and vaccination and immunization. These are the three pillars in pediatrics. So these are highly scoring and these will remain constant irrespective of which case you get. Whether you get a small failure to thrive crying cranky baby or you will get an adolescent thalassemic who will walk by himself and get his weight and height checked. Whatever it is, this is what we focus upon. You should know growth and development, nutrition, anthropometry and vaccines completely. And if you know this, essentially you have scored a great amount in your exam. This with good history. Even if you are not able to demonstrate all the signs because the child is irritable and it's difficult to examine, in that event also you will do extremely well in your exam if you are able to do cover up this three section of pillars very well. So I, my strong recommendation is to focus on these three sections, growth development, nutrition anthropometry and vaccination. Highly scoring, very special to pediatrics. A lot of pediatric physiology, there is not much pathology here, it's all physiology and that should make this your case taking very very unique. So the best way to learn these three pillars is 
every case you will do the growth development nutrition diet history diet calculation immunization history that is what i have focused upon every time i have taken a class as well so when you focus on these three aspects you have looked at the child holistically that is the impression you give and that is what we want as examiners we don't want you to look only at the pathology and forget about all the other problems the child has so we have to look at every child holistically as a member of the family as a member of the school and the school community as well as a member of the society that is where all these three pillars play a big role so questions in these if unanswered will always give a nagging doubt as to whether does the student really know pediatrics or does he or she consider pediatrics as a a small offshoot of adult medicine so students who do really well in this their case no matter how it goes your exam will go well now that's set apart now these are my three pillars if you have finished then what else is pediatrics the rest of the pediatrics i wanted to put it as a roof over this house of three pillars what does this roof contain this roof contains a broad base of pediatric physiology pediatric physiology is the normal physiology in a child which is the beauty of the subject transition from neonatal circulation to adult circulation like this development as embryology from embryology to infancy and infancy to puberty all this is a great component is pediatric physiology so with the broad base of pediatric physiology what do we have you see we have only a very small top and that top part of the triangle is our roof of the roof which is the pediatric pathology these are the reasons why i feel pediatrics is not so difficult a subject as it is made out to be we have a lot of physiology you have lot of beautiful children in your lives here and there somewhere you will come across children so with this it should be very easy actually to just observe and learn all these three dimensions from anywhere either in your family extended family with your friends with children even a child children of the people who work in your house all of it will all of them will help in contributing to learning in pediatric physiology and you know pediatric pathology is one small part most of the diseases in pediatrics are just a little bit wayward away from deviant pediatric physiology and we have to give minimum intervention gentle management to get them back on track that is why this is how i would advise you all to learn pediatrics get your pillars strong on top of your strong pillars build a strong foundation of pediatric physiology and on top of that rest your core of pediatric pathology now finally when the exams do they will come knocking door so that time what remember your three pillars in detail remember the common topics covered in each system now remember your universities will be having separate important topics for each system subject so in that each system say cardiovascular system the renal system the respiratory system every part of that subject cannot be covered as final mbbs exams they will come for the pediatric post graduation there will be certain important aspects which are derived based upon their occurrence in the community how did certain topics come selected as topics which final mbbs students should know these topics have come selected as what we have to teach final mbbs students because these are the diseases which are commonly seen in the community and which interns when they finish final mbbs are likely to come across and may need to require referral to higher centers to manage such cases so that is the reason why certain topics of each system have been covered in extreme depth focus on those topics that is how your theory exam preparation should be for those who enjoy making notes please add on to your class notes do not waste time duplicating notes this is what i see my students doing you have one book for your fourth semester clinical posting then you will have another book for your eighth semester clinical posting and another new shiny book for the ninth semester posting and in the ninth semester you ask them what happened to the fourth semester book the fourth semester book is in 80% of students nowhere to be found that's only unnecessary duplication of notes it is not required have one book and keep on adding to it and when you do that you will have a very composite book and the familiarity of looking at what you have written again and again actually sinks it into your brain and recall is much faster how do you plan for your practical practical exam remember again my three pillars are very important that is going to decide whether your how good you are in that exam over and above that will be what case you get and how discussion goes based upon the case 
So remember that has to be focused upon based upon the case matrix of your university. Now there are certain cases like cerebral palsy, nephrotic syndrome, glomerular nephritis, thalassemia, failure to thrive. Now these are all the sets of cases which are very important and will definitely if they are there in the ward they will come for your exam. So focus on those kind of cases. The case matrix of the university should be focused upon and each case whenever you see any case whether it fits into your case matrix or not learn from that case in the three pillars. If it fits into your case matrix, go ahead and learn in depth about that subject. And if it is an offshoot case, suppose it's a rare case of say ataxia telangiectasia which was found in the ward and your faculty decide to take that case for you, allot it to you for presentation. That time, it may or may not come for your exam, okay, rare case of say tuberous sclerosis or ataxia telangiectasia may not come for the exam. But from that case, apart from the case based learning, you will also learn your nutrition, development, anthropometry, diet, everything you learn from each and every case. And once you do that, you will be learning holistically. Recall in the exam will become much more easier. Don't attend clinical posting with a mundane blinkered approach where you go, attend the class, the knowledge is transferred from the examiner to you and from you to your book and it remains in the book. It never enters your head. Let it not be that way. Anywhere, whenever you are trying to learn, learn separately about these three pillars in every case so that the speed of doing it in the exam will be much faster. You don't have to unnecessarily get worried. How will I take diet history? How will I calculate nutrients? How will I take immunization history? Write everything? How will I do it in 30 minutes? How will I do it in 45 minutes? This stress will not be there if you do it routinely. You will have a fair idea what the calorie calculation will be, fair idea what expected weights, heights, expected calories will be for various ages of children. Only practice makes you perfect. And where do you get to practice? Don't search for extra time. Your clinical posting is the time you can practice. Go to the ward, individually go, see a case just for the sheer curiosity, take the case. You will learn lifelong from children and those children are the ones where your case-based learning is going to improve very, very well, especially when it comes to these three pillars. Remember, for those who wish that edge of getting that distinction, getting that university medal, always analysis of the case, complete diagnosis where you add on your nutrition, add on the etiological diagnosis. That's what gives the examiner the impression that this student has not just been told the case from some other uh, postgraduate and has actually thought about what this case should be and actually incorporated the nutrition, the dietary deficiencies or excesses, etc., and incomplete immunization, whatever, and incorporated everything in the diagnosis. And that is really impressive. That's what will help you get that distinction and that coveted medal. Viva Vosi. Viva Vosi in university to university, you'll have your standard trays, that is your x-rays, instrument, diet, nutrition, vaccine, drug trays. These are not something which you have to keep learning and revising. If with every case you learn to look at the x-ray and read the x-ray of that case, then you don't have to really go and learn to read an x-ray right before the exam. You will have an overall idea how to read an x-ray. So like that, when you see a procedure, learn about the instruments used in that procedure. When you're calculating diet and nutrition, learn about the important things like what is a tomato rich in, what is a banana deficient in. So like that curious information you can keep picking up as and when you're reading about the case. Vaccines and drugs, yes, these are very uh, volatile subjects, especially vaccines and drugs. But if you keep reading them and focusing how to, in the seven headings which I have taught you, you focus on that, it will be very easy to go further. Now. I have finished my one section. Now come to my second section that is preparation for your PG NEET exams and for your qualifying exams. Now how will you do it with respect to pediatrics? Usually most qualifying exams involve multiple choice questions. Now students are of various types. There are some students who do very well in multiple choice questions and some students who do write beautiful answers but don't do very well in multiple choice questions. I was one of the students who was really not very good in multiple choice questions. In fact, it so happens that the presentation of choices tends to confuse me. So it's, it was very hard for me to actually learn how to crack a qualifying exam. So always nowadays, now that the MCQs have changed in quality, and everything starting from anatomy itself is now becoming case-based. So 
So use of case vignettes usually will help to make the multiple choice question a lot more clinically oriented and a lot more better. So focus on those case vignettes and these case vignettes are your case matrix. Specific important cases and in each system important topics and cases of those topics. Once you know that specific features of that topic will become quite more easier to understand and analyze when you are given a multiple choice question with multiply correct answers. Some universities have single best response, some have multiple correct answers. So if you know that case vignette well, you will be able to read around it and tick even multiply correct answers based in certain universities. Always in the entrance exams, focus on what was asked in the previous question papers, not exactly to know the topic, but to know how the questions are phrased or rather how the questions are paraphrased and that is very important. So when you read, you will focus on what was asked in the previous papers, not essentially for the same question or the same topic or the same system. It is to see how the questions are phrased or rather paraphrased so that similarly based cases will come from similar topics. If first time you have had a question in a previous question paper on say hepatitis, the next time you may have a similar based questions on say Wilson's disease. So like that reading around that similar topic will tell you how the questions are based. Plan a list of topics in pediatrics and remember focus on what is weak, focus on what you are weak on. By reading what you already know, you will be cementing upon a cemented road. When you already know something, recall it and test yourself whether you really know what you are supposed to know. But when you are weak, recalling brings tension. Recalling brings feel, feelings of fear that oh, I don't remember anything. So it's a lot more comforting to recall something you already know. So plan a list of topics in pediatrics, cover the weaker topics or the more difficult ones first and then go on to what, is, what seems easier to you or what seems easier to recall to you. Important questions which are regularly renewed are where latest guidelines are involved. Latest guidelines especially in neonatal resuscitation, immunization, cardiac guidelines, there are newer guidelines which come up regularly. So this is where reading previous old old textbooks and old guidelines will not suffice. In these topics you need to be informed upon the latest guidelines. I have taken only two as example, there are lots more where you need latest guidelines and that's what's asked in the exams. Don't leave out weak topics. Pediatrics comes to around 10 questions in your 300 questions of need. But however, these 10 questions may have the make or break situation. So that is why, especially when these questions will come from those three pillars, make sure that you do know those three pillars of pediatrics very, very well. Second, don't leave out weak topics like storage diseases, genetics in pediatrics, Mendelian, non-Mendelian, inheritance, metabolic disorders. Now these are the topics which are very favored by those who set the question paper because asking a tough question from a common topic is really difficult from the examiner point of view. It's a lot more easier to ask a moderately difficult question from a topic which is not normally covered. Hence, these are the topics examiners prefer to focus upon, especially in challenging exams like NEET. So don't leave out weak topics. Even in those 10 questions, you should be able to score full on full if you plan your studies in such a way that you focus on what is regularly asked, focus on weak topics, focus on case vignette based learning. With that, you should be quite set to go. Next, I want to focus upon learning of pediatrics as a subject which includes both your final MBBS as subject as well as your preparation for the PG need. The learning of pediatrics as subject comes, when I look at it, it comes from three main sources. They are your books, your bedside clinics and case-based learning for long-term retention. Now in the books, the books I have found good with good amount of MCQs, good amount of case-based vignettes. In pediatrics, I have reviewed lots of books. And I have found the textbook on Suraj Gupta having a lot of interesting case vignettes and MCQs in the end as well as there's a quite a bit of detail in many of the topics. So that's another good choice of book that you have. But remember all along it is what you feel comfortable to read is what you have to focus upon. There are many students who read their class notes. I was one of those students who read my class notes and I found that Supplementing the textbook with my class notes was the best way of learning. So you have to find what suits you best. Options, these are there. 
Now, the, through the development of this e-learning module, what are the things that we have tried to focus upon? In the pediatrics module which I have developed, I have found that students are various types of learners. There are some students who learn by reading a book. There are some students who learn when we talk in the classroom, like books will be there, but the classroom teaching and the interaction with the teacher really makes a difference and they are auditory learners, wherein they listen and then they retain. So they are called auditory or the audio learners. You have visual learners where you read a book and then you retain. Just hearing a topic you may not retain, but you need to read and see it in print and then you'll be able to retain better. There are some mixed learners who have learned from the visual component like pictures as well as the audiological component as well as reading. There are kinesthetic learners who have to do and perform procedures to learn from it. So through this module, kinesthetic procedures, essentially procedural pediatrics, which you will do when you become an intern. The remaining three learners is what we have tried to focus upon, where you will, through the e-learning module, you have visual impact with the slides and what's written on it. Audiologically, where we are also taking a class for all of you as you're listening. And simultaneously, we are pointing out on the slide what is important. We are writing down and highlighting important points and explanations. So hence focusing upon all three types of learners. I have put in a lot of practical case scenarios which you don't cover in textbooks. Textbooks will give you introduction, epidemiology, pathophysiology or pathogenesis, clinical features, investigations, management. And if you look, there are so many diseases which will come with headache, fever, vomiting. But in the books, there are in three different, four different chapters. Some will come in acute uh, gastroenteritis chapter. Some will come in central nervous system chapter. Some will come in hypertension chapter. Some will come in metabolic diseases chapter. But when a child comes to the hospital, the child comes with fever, headache, vomiting. So when the child comes like that, how do you know which of these systems are involved? That kind of approach based Teaching is what I focused upon when we put our clinical case scenarios and then learn, teach how to analyze it and arrive at my favorite etiological diagnosis. This is for hands-on ground learning. Finally, we have included the test time where you'll have questions. These questions are both case vignette based as well as important points taken from the class so that you'll be able to identify little wayward questions which are not classically given in your textbooks. Second, through the test time also I have discussed lots of other topics which I could have put in the class but however to break the monotony of a class we have covered the must knows in the class and we have put the good to know, the interesting to know and all that in the test time so that for those students who will like to connect a lot more dots than, than what is actually required to pass the test time and how it is analyzed really helps for those students. And last but not the least, what I have tried to focus in my modules is to answer the question why. When I was a student, I never could really find out uh, why certain things were there in pediatrics. And why did we, why did development have to occur in this manner? Why were vaccines given in this manner? Why was only some vaccine given intramuscularly? Why were some vaccines given subcutaneously? What is the cause, re reason, be sorry, what is the reason behind these things? So to answer these questions is what I have tried to do when I explain in my module and that is why the answering of the question why helps to prevent the mugging and the uh, kind of rote learning which pediatrics tends to become for some of you. Many students if you know the answer to why you don't need to mug up, you don't need to rote learn. You don't have to keep on revising it again and again. Once you know why, you can with good language actually paraphrase the answer yourself and bring out a beautiful answer. So that is what is the common thread which is the undercurrent in all my modules. That is answering the question why in pediatrics. And finally, for those who, are, who have wanted to take the path that I have taken, that is pediatrics as a speciality. Now remember, pediatrics is an art. It's rarely much of a science. It's more of an art which involves history taking, a lot of observation and deduction. The three pillars will remain cornerstones of the subject starting from your fourth semester right up to the last day of your practicing pediatrics. They'll remain cornerstones of the subject. Skill development is very important. And when those who are taking it, they want to take pediatrics up as a subspeciality. It's the first year of pediatrics which is for skill development. Don't waste your first year in routine mundane work. 
focus on skill development. Skill development can be something as simple as insertion of an IV line, which seems simple, but when the same thing you have to insert in a 1 kg neonate, it becomes a challenging task. So focus on skill development in the first year of pediatrics and then focus upon building your base with your three pillars and above that pediatric physiology and pediatric pathology. Finally, hard work and passion is the key. You have to work hard and you have to be truly passionate about the subject to really enjoy it. What is the end result? What is the good thing in the end? The gold medal, what I would say is the immense satisfaction that you get by learning the beauty in child physiology. Eventually, children of your own, children of your family, all of it, you can enjoy the beauty in child development and child growth when you take this as a subspeciality. So with that note, wishing you all all the very best and a very happy learning experience. Signing off. Good luck.